Good evening and welcome to the second of three marquee presentations taking place at the 38th Miami Film Festival. My name is Jay LeBlanc and I am the festival's executive director and co-director of programming. To begin, we would like to thank Cohen Media Group and Film Factory for their support of tonight's presentation. A new film by Fernando Treva is always a major event at Miami Film Festival, and tonight we are very proud to be presenting the U.S. premiere of the Colombian production El Olvido Que Seremos, Memories of My Father. It's an extraordinary film made even more extraordinary by the powerhouse star performance by Javier Camara in the lead role. This is undoubtedly one of the finest performances of a career that continues to triumph. And it is on this occasion that Miami Film Festival wishes to honor Javier Camara with our Precious Gem Award. The Precious Gem Award is reserved for honoring the truly special stars of this art form. Those one-of-a-kind artists whose contributions to cinema have both entertained us and brought us greater understanding of the human condition in unforgettable ways. Those words most certainly describe world cinema's love for Javier Camara. His on-screen persona runs the gamut from inspired comedian to a deeply tender, often wounded soul. He first appeared on screen at Miami Film Festival's 16th edition in the original Parente film, which spawned one of the most successful comedy franchises in Spanish film history, and for which he was nominated for his first Goya Award. Just a few years later, he earned another Goya nomination for his heartbreaking role in Pedro Amadovar's Talk to Her, playing Benigno, the sensitive nurse of a young woman in a coma who cares so much about his patient that he winds up in jail for impregnating her. In all, Javier Camada has been nominated eight times for a Goya Award for Acting, including at this year's ceremony, which is taking place tonight, March 6th, in Malaga, Spain. He has previously won two Goyas as Best Lead Actor in David Trueba's Living is Easy with Eyes Closed, and as Best Supporting Actor in Seske's Truman. In recent years, his international profile has risen profoundly with popular roles in Netflix's Narcos and in HBO's The Young Pope. But it is this current role in Memories of My Father that demonstrates the depths of conviction, experience, and wisdom that Javier Camara has brought to his craft playing Dr. Hector Abad Gomez, a real-life Colombian hero of the medical profession. We see this great man for what he meant to his children. It's in tender, simple exchanges, such as the one that we see in this scene from the film, that Javier Camara reveals the deep humanism of his character. Te llevas a la boca todas las bacterias recogidas durante el día. Papá, entonces, no puedo ir con ustedes. No, 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 no tan rápido, no seas acelerado. ¿Eh? Mira, si no, no te quitas el mugre. ¿Cómo es que es esa canción que le gusta tanto a Marta? ¿Cuál? Eh? ¿La que baila cada rato? Sí. ¿La del muerto? Eso. Pues la cosa es que la cantes y que te laves las manos durante el tiempo que dura la canción. ¿Sí? ¿Se acuerda del Dr. Sound? We're here today with the Javier Camara, the recipient of our Precious Gem Award for a lifetime of great performances, and in particular, this new fantastic performance in El Olvidio Que Sermos. Please welcome from Madrid, Javier Camara. Hello, Jay. Hello. This is a, it's a fantastic pleasure for me to be here with you. Yes, thank you for joining us and, and congratulations on, on the film and, uh, and on our Precious Gem Award. Uh, it's a great honor to be with you today. No, it's my great honor uh, to receive an award like with this amazing name, uh, Precious Gem. Is, oh my God, I don't consider myself a Precious Gem, but, uh, but it's nice that uh, <laughs> people, people from all over the world uh, decide to uh, give me this award. I'm, I'm so, so pleased, I promise you. Well, we love you in Miami. Miami loves you. You are. I love Miami too. <laughs> it's a pity. It's a pity thing to be locked in Madrid and not to be possible to to travel to you and enjoy the city again. 
So I want to say, you know, jump in uh, to, to our conversation by starting to just speak about um, El Olvida Case de Animals. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, it's, a, you know, a, a great performance, one of the, the, the great highlights of your career. A, a performance um, such as this one, you know, can only be the result of, of many layers of, of preparation and, and research. Can, can you tell us about your, the steps that you went through in creating um, Dr. Ada Gomez in, in the movie? What are your earliest decisions and creative choices? You know, Jay, it's well. It's 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 the normal job that an actor uh, has to done every in every single film. But this film was special because I I knew about the book three years before uh, three years uh, yeah before to start the film. And Fernando Trueba gave me the book when I was going to Narcos to shoot Narcos in Colombia. He told me. What, what uh, do you have some book in your luggage to go to Colombia? I said, Oh, I have all the Gabriel Garcia Market books because I want to read these books in Colombia. And he said, No, I offer you this book. And he gave me El Olvido Que Seremos. And you can imagine the amazing journey that I have with this book until the day that I started to shoot the film. It was amazing because this film is 100% Colombian. This story is mandatory. It's mandatory to be Colombian for to to do this film. Not not only because of budgets and and uh, and production and everything, because it was impossible to be part of this film at the beginning. No, and uh, well, it's a long it's a long story to to. But finally, I was doing this film, and Fernando was sending me a lot of information about these amazing men. I was shooting with uh, Paolo Sorrentino in Venice. And Fernando sent me a lot of um, audios uh, with the with the Hector Abad Gomez uh, voice because he has a program, a radio program every week. Uh, he he was a teacher in the university in the in the doctor medicine uh, university. He was a pandemistic uh, a pandemist uh, doctor, and he was a very famous, well known uh, man in his country. He he was. And I have a lot of information, no? But some, sometimes I think it's fantastic to be Spanish because I have the distance to, because I was in Venice receiving all this information. It's like, oh my God, the accent, for example, was so, I prepared the accent for Narcos. And the accent, we were a bunch of actors from all over Latin America, you know? And the accent was a little like a middle accent, Colombian. But this guy, his accent was so, Beautiful, so I don't know. He's a that the prosodia, the, the the pronunciation of this beautiful voice in the radio and in the like a teacher, you know this. And and the other and on the other hand, in the, with his family, he has a lot of layers. This guy, he's a very he's he, he was a very difficult character for me. But the best thing is like if I if I would be a, a Colombian. It has been very difficult for me to 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 maintain my 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 emotions out of the because the history of Colombia of the the latest 30 40 years have been so hard and uh, to be a Spanish give me the distance to not be so moved constantly uh, during during the the film no during the shooting yes so so the film the way you know the way uh... Fernando presents the film. It's it's about two things really. It's about um, Dr. Abad Gomez's his legacy as a human rights activist, but but also his legacy as as a father and a, and a family man. Yeah. What do you think um, the film most inspires in audiences? You, you know, who experience the film in, in our moment right now? Because even even when we make a film about history, we're really yeah. making a film about right now. No, of course, of course, but he's he's alive. This guy is alive. He was murdered. He was killed. But his his ideas, he's he's absolutely alive. You can you can see the film, and and we were shooting. A, I remember we were shooting a, a scene when he helps his little son to clean his hands with the water. No, and he he said to the to his son, "You have to clean your your hands for forty five seconds at least, and you have to sing a song." And because it takes a lot of time to clean your hands. And we were, I was thinking, oh, Fernando, I don't, I don't know if this scene is 
it's necessary for the film. Yeah, you, you. And now it's absolutely actual. It's like, oh my God, everybody, everybody around the world is is uh, cleaning his hands, is taking care of, and the the message of the film is so strong right now because this guy is a uh, so so. I don't know. It, it, it's a lie for me. It's like uh, I, I'm. I'm watching the film. It's like yes, <laughs> that happened right now. He, he said that. 40 years uh, before, and, and it's absolutely actual. Yeah, it's a real, it's a beautiful moment of, of tenderness. And, and you know, the, the situation that we've been in, I think it has really taught us so much about remembering these little moments, remembering yeah. the and, and And, you know, Jay, the, 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 mm, our societies are so machist. Uh, the machism is really... Uh, deep in uh, not only in Colombia, even in Spain, and and this guy is so warm with his family, with his child. This kind of education, this kind of love for his family and for the people, to dedicate their life to help poor people, to to have clean water. You know, it's like uh, it's not a hero because I don't want to perform a hero. It's like oh my god, he's a very heroical attitude. This guy, you no, know? no, I want to perform a. I want to humanize the guy, you know, my, my, my goal was, okay, I'm going to give him my soul and my, my, my hands and my movements. But I don't know, as, as much as I discover the, 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 the journey, the, the life of this guy is like, oh my God, that's fantastic. It, it was so involved with the society and with his family at the same time. And that's really difficult, you know? That's incredible intensity. Um... With, you know, a role like this does does it um, does the experience of, of this film of playing a character like that does that affect you or change your perspectives in a way? Of, 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 you know, does it change you as a person when you complete a role like this? I'm a father, you know. I'm a father. I remember three years uh, before when I was reading the book, I was crying because I've never had a relationship like this with my father. My father passed away a long time ago. And I was envy. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, it exists. You can have a beautiful relation with your father as a son. And this book is a is a is a love is a love letter from a son to his father. No? But when we were ready to shoot the film, I began to read the book again, and I take a lot of notes. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, oh this is fantastic for educating my my child. Oh, this is great for for me. And I. You know, I, I was taking notes about the this amazing example of this. Uh, the book is full of phrases and full of little advice, it's full of love. It's like if you, if, I remember one, it said, if you want that your kid was good, love him. And if you want that your life uh, was better, love him more. It's like, uh, and it's like, oh my God, this is good. I have to take this note. But there is a lot. And I, I think that, this is the the, the 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 character that has given me the most uh, from other from all my career. Uh, wow. It's so alive. I, I'm I'm so moved. I'm watching the trailer, for example. I'm crying like a baby. Like, oh my god, it was one year ago, and I'm I'm still moved with this. I I want to go to Colombia to see the the premiere with everybody there because I don't know. I I'm I'm so I'm so deeply moved with this film. Well, Miami is going to experience it in, in a few minutes. So you, you know, we're, we're presenting this before the oh my God. year here. So I know everyone is really looking forward to it. But um, for a few minutes, I, I, I want to talk um, about, uh, about the other roles, your other, the other part of your career leading up to, to this film. Um, you know, your career is now extended more than 30 years. Uh, what... Yeah. What would you tell um, Javier Camara of 1991 when he was first getting his his first professional roles? What what would you tell him that he did not know about about acting? <laughs> <laughs> um, I I want to tell him that I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> with 19 years old because <laughs> yes, I miss him not I, I think I'm it's with me now but uh but I remember that I was uh, a teenager trying to study uh escaping from my little town my little village in La Rioja in the north of Spain and 
and saying to my dad and my mom, I'm going, I want to be, I don't want, I don't know if I want to be an actor, but I want to escape from here because this is so little. No? And, uh, and I discovered this amazing profession and I love that. But I remember a mixture of, of unconscious, unconsciousness and determination, you know, and I love that. It works for me for years because I was so determined to do things, but at the same time, I was so unconscious doing things. Uh, for example, I remember when, well, in my early years, like, like an actor, but I remember shooting with Pedro Almodovar uh, and talked to her. He, he came to me once and said, uh, Javier, do you speak English? And I said, uh, English? No, 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 I speak a little French or, oh, you have to. Oh, okay, okay, Pedro. Okay, let's let's shoot. And and in ten minutes later, uh, Esther Garcia, uh, his uh, producer, came to me and said, "Oh, have you been talking with Pedro about English?" Said, yes, yes, he wants to. He asked me if I speak English. Said, you have to. I go, uh, why? It's like because you are going to travel around the world with this film. And how do you know that? You know, it's like, like because it's Pedro Almodovar. You are you are the main character. You have to speak English. Like, okay, I need an agency, I need a school. This guy, okay, don't don't worry about the school. I found you a school for you, but you have to study four or five uh, hours every day. Like, are you sh serious? You know, I was so unconscious, even shooting with Pedro Almodovar 10 years be before, I, 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 10 years uh, after I, I was working on. And I am so, I was so, I, I, sometimes I miss me. I miss me when, when I was little. It was it was nice. It was stupid and it's fantastic. So speaking about about, about Amadovar and, and you know you've worked with you, you know him more than once and you've worked with some of the very top Spanish filmmakers in, in your career. I'm thinking not only of Fernando Treva, of course, David Treva, his brother, for which you won the Goya for Best Actor. Yeah. Isabel Coche, Cesc Gay, Pablo Berger. More. What are what are some of the best memories of, of what you've learned from from each one of them? I guess we know with Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know some some memories and anecdotes from. I I told you I told you once. Um, I don't know. I remember a lot of them. A lot of them. I remember one day. Uh, well, the first day, the first day when I was shooting with Pedro Almodovar, and talk to her. Everything happened to me because I'm crazy. I'm stupid. And he, uh, the first take was okay. It's a fantastic take. Fantastic, Javier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. He, he, I was with uh, Dario Grandinetti, the Argentinian actor, and Leonor Wadlin. And then Peter came to me and said, "Oh, okay. That, that it was great. This first take. Okay, let's let's do another. And be careful uh, in the second take. Uh, no, not to show." How delight, delighted you are to work with Pedro Almodovar. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, 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 and I remember myself smiling like a stupid guy. Like, oh. You know, it's like I was smiling in the first take. And, and Leonor said, Yes, you were stupidly smiling in the first take. It's like, Oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like a, acting like this. <laughs> You know, like okay, yeah. And don't show it. Don't show it, Javier. You are so happy, but don't show it. And uh, no, I have a lot of anecdotes. I remember once with Ricardo Darín shooting Truman, uh, a film from this guy. Yes. And I remember that I prepare everything in my house. I prepare a, a breakfast because uh, Ricardo came from uh, Argentina and Cesc came from Barcelona, and we were shooting in Madrid. And I organized my house with a beautiful breakfast. And I remember that that Ricardo came with the and ring the and open, I opened the, the, the door, I prepared and, and and Ricardo said, before the coffee, let's let's put the deaf people on, on the table. Let's talk about our deaf people. And I said, okay. He's like, I, I want to tell you why I'm going to do this film. Uh -huh. and, and he was Ricardo Darín, you know, for us, for the Latin American people, Ricardo is one of our totems, one of our great, great actors. And I was there with him and he was moved, trying to explain why he decided to do this film. And I don't know, and the three of us, the three men, we, went, we went, began to cry, telling our own thoughts about how to do this film. And 
And I love this complicity and I love this sincere guy speaking. And I thought, oh my God, this is the best actor in this generation for, is an example for everyone. And it is because of that, you know, it's because of he's so concerned and so worried and, and he wants that everyone's stay in the same energy to do the film. And I love that. You know, I, I have a lot, of, a lot of examples and lessons during my 30 years of career. And I want to, and I, I'm, I'm open every day to receive these lessons from an actor or from an extra or from the director or from, I don't know. And I love that. Wow, that, that's beautiful. And that is the place that we, you know, that, that's the starting place for the, for the rest, for the rest of, <laughs> of, of, your, of your, the work ahead. So I, I, you know, I, I don't even want to ask about the future. We are look, look forward to sharing this movie now with Miami. It's the U.S. premiere here today in this theater. And uh, congratulations on, on the award, on the Precious Gem Award. We, we love you in Miami and, and we look forward. Oh, Jay, I love you too. I love you, I love you everybody in Miami. I have a lot of friends in Miami. And Miami has offered always an, an amazing point of view without prejudice from the cinema of all Latin America countries. We have an amazing, an amazing talented people doing amazing films and music and books and everything. And we have to be so happy. And Miami is an example of a mixture, it's an example of, it's a laboratory of ideas and of, of cultures. And it's fantastic to receive this award because I'm so pleased. I'm so happy. I don't know how to how to get back my energy to to you guys, but thank you very much. We feel it. We feel it. So thank you again for joining us and uh, mas el futuro. Okay. okay. I hope. I hope to. I hope that that el olvido que sabemos was a success in in the United States from today to the future. And the futuro, we'll see, we'll see. But we hope to see you again and enjoy and, and enjoy with, because we have done some beautiful films and we can laugh and drink something together. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.